hopefully you can see it's still a little bit shiny and I want it to be um, dull. I want the paper to be damp, not really wet. So I'm going to grab a towel. This is a nice soft paper towel. And I'm going to lightly lay that down and take off some of this water. I'm not pressing down very hard. Um, sometimes I like to take a lot more water off, but today I just want to get this to a place where this paper is damp. There we go. That should do it right about there. It still has a few little areas of shininess, and that's just about perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did over here, except now I'm working on damp paper. And um, again, it's just a good it's a good exercise, it's a good thing to practice. You know, a lot of times we get used to painting one way and we say, well, this is how I paint. Um, it's really good to mix it up a little bit and try different things. And painting on a, on a very damp paper um, can really help you loosen up. If you're someone who struggles with painting too tight, try painting on a damp paper. Um, and I need to grab this. I'm going to have my spray bottle ready, too. Again, I might want to loosen up here. So I can kind of use this one as a guide, and I'm just going to dive right in and kind of do the same thing. I might use more brush strokes this time, but still, it's going to be pretty limited in, in what I'm doing. And I want to work nice and big. Um, you know, don't be afraid of having things go off of the edge and you know, you don't want to be working on a piece of paper this size and have your subject matter be tiny. You want it to fill the space. Okay, first brush stroke. I know that this needs to be a lot darker in here, so I'm putting in almost pure paint. Okay, there we go. You can see it blurring right here. This is where the paper is still more wet. Here you see a pretty crisp edge, and here you see it, it's a lot softer. So that's part of the fun part of painting on wet on wet, or wet on damp, as is the case here. And I want to make sure that I leave plenty of white space. This is where my darkest darks are going to go, and this is really just pure paint right from the tube. Down here where these little, um, you know, these, the roots at the bottom, you know, they get very dark when they're in the shadow. I love all this white space in there, and I may just leave that as is. Um, I want to work on the top a little bit. right in here. Kind of bring some of that out. That shape a little bit. I'm 
just like that. And bring this right up to that edge without actually touching it. It's kind of tricky. Right through there. And then in a couple spots, I do want to touch it so that it gets a nice uh, variety of lost and found edges. Paint that blue in right there. And I'm going to leave this part white, but I want to put in a little blue just along this edge there and down in here. I love how this has that nice lost edge right in there. So taking that blue up to it will um, even make that nicer. Put in a few little splatters and okay. Last thing I want to do, take some of that blue. I need to actually need to add a little bit more in. I feel like my makeshift palette. I do this a lot when I'm working and I need just need a little bit of one particular color. I'll put it right on the table or right on the um, painting surface. It just feels like a little bit of blue right in there. It's going to help this painting a lot. I want it to be very subtle, so I'm going to blend that out with some clean water. Okay. Now at this point, I need to let this dry completely, and um, after it dries, I might come back and do a few finishing touches to it. It's going to take quite a while to dry, probably, I don't know, several hours if I just let it set, because see, the back of it is still nice and damp, so even overnight wouldn't hurt. So I'll let this dry, and we'll come back and take a look at it. So I let this painting dry overnight, and uh, here's how it turned out. Um, there's just a few things I want to do to finish it up, and one is going to be adding in some uh, blue right down in this area. That's going to bring out that shape right there, and then I want to soften this and kind of connect it with what's going on up above. Just like that. There we go. We can actually continue this blue over here. Um, I want to darken a few things with the, um, the raw umber. I forgot what it was called there. Just bringing out, a, again, a few little shapes here. Putting in some darks underneath there. That one's pretty subtle. You're not going to notice a big difference there, but it'll make me feel a little better. It's a little more complete or something. Um, then you can see how this kind of has a rounded shape right here. And if I added a touch of um, blue alongside that, and then Again, washed, uh, blended it out. It's going to bring out that shape a little bit. Um, I could do the same thing right over in this section, putting in some blue. You can see all these things are pretty subtle, and this is where you don't want to overwork a piece. You know, you're better off to stop before you ruin something. <laughs> so I'm not going to let myself do too much more here. Yeah, I think that's good. I think I'm going to call it finished. So again, I hope you try this at home. Uh, the point of both of these paintings is to focus on confident and simple brushstrokes.